Recently, my colleague Mary Gamba, who is the executive producer and co-anchor of our sister series, Lessons in Leadership, sat down with Carissa DeSantis, principal of Newark Vocational High School, to talk about leadership, to talk about leadership in urban public high schools. Yes, it's a Lessons in Leadership program that Mary and I uh, did, but we thought it would be important to share with our audience here on One on One. Let's check it out. We kick off our conversation today with Carissa DeSantis, who's principal in Newark Vocational High School. Uh, this is part of our Stand and Deliver Powering Equity and Social Justice series, promoting youth leadership, particularly in our urban communities, and also part of our series on urban matters. Carissa, so good to see you. Hi, likewise. Thank you for the invite. You got it. Chris, tell everyone what um, Newark Vocational High School is, because it has a great reputation. So Newark Vocational High School is a very unique school in Newark, New Jersey. Um, we have the option of three different pathways for our students. Our students get to choose between a four-year program in culinary arts or hospitality and tourism or graphic design. Our students have an opportunity to participate in something called FCCLA. FCCLA is Family, Career, Community, and Leaders of America. It's competitions that occur across the state of New Jersey in hospitality and, and tourism, graphic design, and culinary arts. So that's one of the leadership opportunities that our students have. We actually just participated in the fall conference, and our students took home eight separate medals. So we're, we're very excited about that. So, Carissa, talk to us a little bit about youth advocacy, right? You were just talking about all the students and the different tracks and just preparing them for the world. How do we really impart the youth advocacy, letting them know that they are leaders in Newark and in our communities throughout uh, the state? So I, I think for me, the, the leadership piece meanings, you know, really becoming aware of, of who you are and, and where you want to go, right? Um, before Newark Vocational, I was an elementary principal uh, who also had eighth graders in the school. And I would meet with the eighth graders in the beginning of the year and talk to them about how this year was really important, not just because you're the leaders in the school with the ex expectation of, you know, modeling your behavior, but because you're about to make a really important decision. In Newark, our students have the ability to choose where they go to high school. And part of that to me as a principal, it's my job to make sure that they're exposed to as much as possible. So we would talk to the students about making sure to do their homework, research, which high schools would you like to go to? Why would you like to go there? And now as a high school principal, I, I talk to potential incoming ninth graders about just the fact that they're taking ownership now of their education as they're considering where to apply. We have open houses where we present them with the information on our school, but I talk to them about not just freshman year of high school, I say, you have to think four years along the line, right? Think, think about freshman year of college. You don't just want to think about where you want to go next year because you're going to spend four years there. So in our school in particular, opportunities here include potential for dual enrollment credits with colleges aligned with our pathways. We have opportunities for work-based learning, internships, job shadowing. So we expose them to as much as possible so that they understand what they could possibly getting themselves into. But we also have students in our school presenting to them as well. So empowering our student council to be part of the presentation with our open houses and having the students talk to potential students just about you know what's great about the school, why you should come here, the benefits of the school. So it's nice when we hear potential incoming students hearing from students that are actually in the building with us. Chris, let me, let me follow up on something. Be, because it seems to me that teaching, promoting leadership which is again, again involves communication skills as well, is difficult for any 15, 16 year old. But in an urban community, there are a whole range of challenges that we've talked about before. That's why Urban Matters focuses so much on youth development. And that's why Stand and Deliver and Powering Equity and Social Justice is, is an important part of our programming. Here's the question. To what degree do you believe it's harder for a young person a teenager in a city like Newark, it could be anywhere in New Jersey or anywhere on the East Coast, anywhere in the country, an urban young person, teenager, to develop the leadership skills that that young person needs to be a success. How much more difficult is it? Or am I just on the wrong track here? Honestly, Steve, I think kids are kids. And I think the level of support... Just I think that every, and no matter where you go, you're going to have challenges, right? And what matters is the supports around you. And so when you think about social justice and you think about having any child reach their fullest, fullest potential, being a teenager is tough. Being in high school is tough. 
but the people who are around you, the leaders in the school, the teachers that serve you, the school counselors that you work with, I think it's their job to have a full understanding of the real scope of the community, of course, you know, the scope of just the students on more of a personal level. This way we can really get to the root of what are the barriers, figure out what are the barriers and how do we work together to break them down? Because there are different challenges everywhere. Challenges but you expect it, nothing but... less. I'm sorry for interrupting. You expect nothing less or nothing different from a 15 or 16 year old in Newark in terms of what their leadership potential is. You expect nothing in a different, nothing different. No, absolutely not. They they all they all deserve to and are capable of reaching the same potential as anyone else. Mary? Yeah, definitely. Carissa, can you talk a little bit about servant leadership? A lot of what we talked about throughout the Stand and Deliver program was be the change. 12 years ago, we let that be the theme of the program. Talk about what that means for these young adults, it, you know, that you see as they're growing, they're evolving. How are you instilling in them that desire and interest to change and be change agents in the world around them while serving others? I think before you can change, you have to know your strengths and your shortcomings. And I think that that's where um, you have to be really intentional about communicating with the students. So um, leadership is also developing leaders, and that is the students as well as the staff. What, regardless of the role, everybody has leadership capacities and leadership responsibilities, and I do talk to the students about that. You're a leader the moment you walk out of your house, right? You might walk into school and someone might be looking at you and be, you know, wow, I don't know that person, but I really like something about them. So people are always watching is, is my point, right? So you don't know that you really are a leader. People might be emulating That's things right. that you do because of the way you carry yourself because of the way that you speak, because of the way that you look. So you have a responsibility to be on your A-game all the time, no matter who's watching. And that's the staff, that's the students, that's myself. Um, but it, it really isn't just about the title. And to me, that's very important. It's about the people, not the title. Chris, I want to thank you so much for joining us. To you and all of the, the leadership um, within the public schools in Newark and every public school system throughout this state, especially in our urban communities, which is why Urban Matters, which is why as a series we're committed to, which is why uh, Stand and Deliver, empowering equity and social justice is a big part of what we're doing. We, we thank you for what you're doing every day, unsung heroes and great leaders. Thanks, Carissa. Thank you. You got it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by PSEG Foundation, Kane University, the Russell Berry Foundation, the New Jersey Education Association, the Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care, Atlantic Health System, Wells Fargo, Summit Health, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by AM970, The Answer, and by Insider NJ. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis when I was two. It's hard to grow up with CF. But I have an awesome care team at Goryeb Children's Hospital, helping me do the things I want to do, like play lacrosse. And now I've been recruited to play in college. Where you go for pediatric care matters. Atlantic Health System, because every moment is a moment that matters.